Israeli intelligence suddenly able to intercept Hamas communications. Another strange thing about Israel's claim that its intelligence services didn't detect preparations for the Hamas attack on October 7th is the fact that it is now releasing what it claims are intercepted conversations of Hamas fighters talking to each other about matters of high importance. Israel has released an audio clip of two voices which it claims belong to Hamas militants speaking about the hotly disputed explosion at the Al-Ali Arab Hospital in Gaza on Tuesday. The IDF had previously told the press that it would be releasing intercepted conversations which prove Palestinian Islamic Jihad, not Israel, was responsible for the blast. Here's a transcript of Israel's English translation of the dialogue. Quote, I'm telling you, this is the first time that we see a missile like this failing, and so that's why we are saying that it belongs to the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. What? They are saying it belongs to Palestinian Islamic Jihad. It's from us? It looks like it. Who says this? They are saying that the shrapnel from the missile is local shrapnel, and not like Israeli shrapnel. What are you saying? And the name is bleeped. But God bless, it couldn't have found another place to explode? Never mind, yes, they shot it from the cemetery behind the hospital. What? They shot it from the cemetery behind the Al-Mamadani hospital, and it misfired and fell on them. There is a cemetery behind it? Yes, Al-Mamadani is exactly in the compound. Where is it when you enter the compound? You first enter the compound and don't go towards the city, and it's on the right side of the Al-Mamadani hospital. Yes, I know it. End quote. You can make of this transcript as you wish. I've seen plenty of people on the pro-Palestinian side of the debate disputing the veracity of the recording for a variety of reasons, claiming Gazans don't speak in the accent used in the clip, to claiming Hamas fighters don't communicate such information over the phone or without using codes for locations but I personally am completely unqualified to make make such assessments, so I'll leave that question alone for the time being. All I'd like to highlight at the moment is the fact that it sure is interesting how Israel suddenly claims to have all this visibility into conversations between Hamas fighters about combat operations against Israel. Where was all this eavesdropping capability while Hamas was preparing a massive assault that wound up killing over a thousand people? It's certainly possible that Israeli intelligence services are phenomenal at spying on Hamas communications. And it's certainly possible that Israeli intelligence services had no idea Hamas was preparing its attack. It's also possible that both are false. But it's very difficult to believe they're both true. It's very hard to believe that Israel had all this insight into what Hamas fighters are communicating about, but somehow missed preparations for a highly sophisticated multi-pronged attack involving motorboats, drones, and motorized paragliders in an area the size of Philadelphia. It's even harder to believe it when you learn that Egyptian intelligence warned Israel of a coming attack shortly before it happened. It's harder still when you learn that, according to CNN, on October 6th, U.S. officials were circulating reporting from Israel indicating unusual activity by Hamas. One of the many problems with the bizarre mainstream consensus that it's fine for nations to go on a murderous rampage whenever something bad happens to them, as we saw from the U.S. after 9-11 and are seeing again in Israel, is that it gives sociopathic intelligence agencies an obvious and undeniable incentive to let bad things happen in order to advance pre-existing agendas that can only be advanced by mass-scale military violence. Whether that's happening in this particular case or not, it would be wise to remove this incentive by insisting on cool heads and rational responses to attacks when they occur.